This dream begins with a road trip. I am with my family, and we are going across the country to Orlando, Florida's Disney World theme parks. Now, the road doesn't have much to look at, and so after reading a book for a few hours, I tell one of my sisters, I'm going to take a nap. And after they say that they will wake me up when we are about to stop for dinner, I put in my earbuds, pick a song to listen to, lean back my chair, and close my eyes, and fall, drift, to a peaceful sleep. Sleeping doesn't last for very long, however, as I'm suddenly woken up by a familiar voice saying, Hey, wake up. It's time to go. I wake up. My eyes open wide, and I sit up suddenly, looking around completely confused, as I am no longer sitting in a moving van. I am in a busy airport, a very large one, with hundreds of people walking by me in a rush to get to their own terminal. Beside me are two bags, one with my name and the other with one of my sister's names, Anna. My sister, she is the one who woke me up, and I look up to see her picking up her bag and waving two airplane tickets at me. I rub my eyes and say, Anna, what is going on? Aren't we supposed to be going to Disney World? She looks at me confused and with a nervous chuckle says, what are you talking about? You want these tickets to go to this exclusive city? They call it a city in the clouds, from a game show on the radio, remember? And I scratch my head in confusion, and I say, I don't know, did I? If I did, I don't remember. And she laughs and says, you say that a lot, don't you? Or you tend to forget some things. And of course, I have to agree, because it's kind of true. <laughs> Needless to say, we were given two tickets. Two tickets to what seems to not only be a plane, but a private jet. The airline is a name that I've never seen before, nor do I recognize. But our names are on there. So... After standing up and giving myself a little bit of a stretch, I grab my bag and say, All right, Anna, because I'm very tired, you lead the way. Otherwise, I don't think we'll get to our plane in time. My sister chuckles again, and she leads me towards the nearest terminal gate, where we are greeted by a young man wearing a unique looking uniform with bright colors and the logo of the airline company stitched onto his right shoulder as well as his left breast pocket. He smiles at us and says, Kay and Anna, correct? We nod. He takes the tickets, smiles at us, and opens the door to a stairwell that leads to the tarmac, and he says, right this way. I look at my sister, and she looks at me, and he takes our bags for us and leads us down the stairs. It's a bright, warm, sunny day, and the sound of airplanes taking off and landing surround us. 
it's a little windy, but manageable, and we make our way down to the tarmac where the small private jet awaits us. On the way down, I look at my sister and say, This is unfamiliar. I would definitely know if I won us plane tickets to a private floating island. And she corrected me first saying it's a floating city, but I shrugged it off and continued with, you know me, I'm somebody who remembers pretty much everything, and if I won tickets for us to go on a private jet, I would know. I would definitely remember. She just shrugs and says, I don't know, Kay. Not all of us are perfect with memory, even you. And I just roll my eyes and say, okay. And that is that. Once we reach the bottom of the stairs and walk towards the jet, we can see just how beautiful it is up close. Shimmering in the sunlight, it's a cream color with almost a lavender lilac outline to decorate the border of each bit of the jet. The man who led us down the stairs hands our bags to who seems to be the pilot, and he says, This is where I leave you. Congratulations on winning. Our boss is very thrilled to meet you. And we thank him, and we walk up the small flight of stairs to enter the private jet. And inside, we see that it is just as beautiful and extremely comfortable. The seats are all leather, the walls are crystally blue. Everything looks very high-end, but also almost unreal in a way. It could be the way that the light shone through the windows and made the leather on the seats glisten. Or it could be the fact that it was very nice and cool in the jet, although there was no air conditioning or anything that could have affected the interior temperature at the time. Either way, we were welcomed by the pilot and two flight attendants, and we are given directions on where to sit, so that we have the best view to the floating city that we have one passage to enter. They tell us that they were thrilled to meet us, and like the first gentleman, they repeated the fact that their boss, somebody named Marcus, was just as thrilled to meet us. We're not too sure who Marcus is, but we assume that he's the one who I talked to in order to win these tickets. And so we say we're very thrilled to be here, to be in the jet, to have won some sort of game or competition. And we can't wait to see where we go next. The pilot chocolates and says, this will be an adventure that you will never forget, I promise you that. And after making sure we are all fastened in with our seatbelts, comfortable and ready to fly, he starts the engines and we take off into the sky. Of course, takeoff procedure is the same as any plane, and we feel the 
the force try and keep us down while the plane lifts us up. It feels exciting for us, and we both talk about how, while it is a little strange that neither of us really know much about how we really got there, or why we're even on the jet still, we can't deny that this is definitely an unforgettable experience. Once it's safe to move, and once the jet is at a cruising altitude, we're given the choice of what to eat for dinner. We choose our food, Anna picks a delicious salmon dish, and I choose a filet mignon with a little bit of fettuccine alfredo pasta. And as they go into the back to prepare the meals, because this jet has a kitchen, we just sit back and relax. Unfortunately, there is no way for us to contact people on the ground, so we just play a couple of games on our phones and listen to music. It's only a few minutes, it seems, and dinner is brought out to us. The smells are absolutely amazing, and the food looks extremely appetizing. And after thanking the flight attendants for their work, we both dig into our dishes. It tastes amazing. And while we eat, I of course have to ask my sister for my old mind's sake, and because I apparently don't remember anything, I want her to tell me what exactly happened for us to get here. In the middle of bites and eating our food, Anna shrugs and says, well, I don't remember that much, but one day when it was just us in the house, we heard a knock at the door. You were busy in your room doing something, so I checked. And hidden amongst the mail was this strange looking envelope. It had your name on it, but our address wasn't on the envelope, nor was there an, any return address. So I picked it up brought it in and gave it to you. You looked just as confused as I did, and so we opened it together, and you read a congratulatory letter. I look at her, and I say, Anna, what are you talking about? What did the letter say? She smiles and says, wow, you really don't remember anything, do you? And that, of course, gave her, or gave me, the right to give her a very judgmental look. <laughs> she says, well, the letter basically congratulated you on winning a radio contest. And that it gave you and one other person to visit this coveted, floating city, the ability to visit it, as it has been talked about, but only a few people have gone to it, mostly celebrities or journalists of unique locations, but this, this was a gift, something that I won. I look at her in the middle of eating, and I am amazed, both at the simple fact that I had won some sort of contest, but the fact that I don't remember it at all. She tells me, it's okay, you were very thrilled despite being confused, and you wanted me to come with you, and of course, 
After wiping my mouth, I say, Of course, Anna. If I'd take anybody with me on a random adventure, it'd be you. You were my sister. We're best friends. We grew up together, of course. I wouldn't want to have anyone else be with me when I go on some spontaneous adventure like this. She smiles at me and says, Well, the same goes for me, and I'm glad we're going to do this together. We finish our meal in silence after that, and we realize it's now the evening. The sun is no longer visible, and the windows to look outside are requested to be closed so that we, my sister and I, have a chance to close our eyes and rest before we reach the floating city. Of course, we comply, and after thanking the flight attendants for taking our dishes away, we lean back in our seats, close our eyes, and seemingly drift off once more into sleep. I remember feeling peaceful, but also a little confused as I wake up. I'm not on the ground, I'm still in the jet, and it takes me a minute to remember where I am and why I'm there. I look across from me where my sister is sleeping, and I look at my phone to see that it is the following morning. I tap my sister on the shoulder, then waking her up, say, You're not the only one seeing these things, right? Anna opens her eyes slowly and still very sleepily. She rubs them, looks around and says, Yeah. You're not the only one seeing this. We are then greeted by a message from the pilot in the cockpit, and he greets us with a lovely good morning. He tells us that breakfast is on the way, and that we will be reaching the floating city in just a few hours. So, we are given time to get up, use the facilities to get ourselves ready for the day, and then to sit back down and await breakfast. We do just that, and soon enough, we are given some food to eat for the morning. While we eat our breakfast that is given to us, Anna and I discuss how we slept how comfortable the seating is, and how strange it was that neither of us really had any dreams. This is odd, especially for me, as I have at least one or two dreams every single night. But I wasn't really complaining. If being extremely comfortable while I sleep means I don't have a dream for a night, that's okay. We talk and laugh about how unforgettable the day will be and how we wish others could join us when we are spoken to once more by the pilot. He tells us that we are very close to the floating city now and if we want to, we can open up the windows and look out to see where we will be for, well, they never told us. We don't mind, really, and so with excitement, we clear our plates, put them at the edge of the table, open our windows, and look out. And what we see is extraordinary. This truly is 
a floating city. It is a very busy looking city that is floating amongst the clouds. It has very industrial yet contemporary buildings as if it's the heart of a city with a few trees lining the streets and a large gate outside in front. The buildings, everything looks shiny, almost new, and yet all of it seems to be painted over in the almost sleepy blue color. It almost creates an entire atmosphere around the city. And it looks a little strange. It gives me a funny feeling, but it's still absolutely beautiful to look at. While marveling at the beautiful, gorgeous, white marble gate in front of the city, Anna taps my shoulder and says, Kay, look up. There's more. I, of course, listen, and tilting my head, my jaw drops as she is right. There are more floating cities, much higher, far above this floating city that we are apparently going to land on. These floating cities have more to offer as well in terms of visuals, as you are able to see what look like floating cars moving from island to island. Cars of all shapes and sizes, speeds, colors. It looks like a very futuristic kind of world. We almost forget that we're still living in the 21st century. Anna and I stare absolutely speechless at what our eyes behold. A floating city? This exists? Not only that, but there's more than one? The pilot chuckles over the intercom, as if he knows what we are doing. And he says to us, I know, I know. I've flown this route so many times for so many years. And yet, it never gets old. I look at my sister and I'm finally able to say, I can't believe this exists. Anna looks at me and says, It really is hard to believe, isn't it? Do you have any idea how amazing it would be to live up here? I, of course, agree, and then after a moment, I say, Huh, Anna, do you notice that the clouds look a little different? She looks at me confused and asks, What do you mean? I say, I mean the clouds, the one supporting the large city, the one that we are about to land on. Those clouds are different, different in color, and it looks like also in texture. In comparison to the other clouds that are holding up the cities higher above, Anna shrugs, and after a moment of staring, she says, You're right, they do look different. The clouds holding the larger city even looks darker than the others. I wonder why. And almost as if he knew what we were saying, the pilot is heard again as he chuckles and says, Do not worry. We are about to land, and once we do, you will be greeted by our boss, Marcus. That's what he likes to go by. And he will tell you everything there is to know about both the large city that we are about to land on and the other cities floating above it. 
So please, put your seat in an upright position and prepare for landing. We are about to reach our destination. Anna and I listen, and we sit tight, both on edge, excited, and anxious for this new journey to what seems to be an impossible place. We feel the jet land smoothly on the landing strip that appears in front of the plane, and once the jet comes to a complete stop, the pilot tells us, welcome to the blue city in the sky. We are told that it is safe to take off our seat belts and to disembark. As we do so, we reach for our bags, but the pilot says, do not worry, you won't need them. We look at him confused and he says, by that, I mean we will have the flight attendants take them to where you will be staying for the next few nights. Anna and I look at each other, a little confused, as we were told that while we were going to have some fun and explore this floating city, we were also going to participate in another game. So. Why would we leave our bags? We decide not to argue, however, as the pilot seems very insistent to keep the bags with us with him. We do not argue, however, as the pilot seems to be very insistent on keeping the bags on the jet. So, after thanking him for the flight and the attendance for the wonderful service, we walk down the steps of the jet and we are greeted by a tall, well-dressed, smiling man who greets us as Marcus. This man towers above the both of us, easily above six feet five inches. He seems strong, but kind, a little too kind, but then again, we both think that it's the showman side of him. He is a radio host after all, and supposedly the one who gave me the tickets that I had won. He greets us with a great smile and says, ah, it's Kay and Anna. Welcome to the blue city in the sky. As you have probably been told, my name is Marcus. The man named Marcus asked us how our flight went, if we were comfortable, and if the food was to our liking. Of course, without hesitation, Anna and I both said that we enjoyed the flight and the food as both were beyond what we could have ever imagined. This made him chuckle, and he smiles again, saying, I'm glad that you enjoyed it. Every contest winner who gets to enjoy the island must also feel as if they are treated like royalty on the way there. And of course we say yes. It was definitely an unforgettable experience, one that made us feel like we were royalty. Marcus smiles at us and says, wonderful. Now, if you will join me on this walk to the gate, I will tell you everything about the city and why you were here. As we begin to walk, I tell him that as wonderful as this place is, we never found any information about it. We had looked in records, we have searched online, and yet there was no indication 
that there was a floating city ever in existence? Marcus chuckles, and looking at me, he says, Well, Miss Kay, there is a very special reason as to why the city is hidden from plain sight, and why only a few may come in. Just please. As we walk, I will tell you everything there is to know about this city and the ones above. How this blue floating island was once a bustling city, but over time became nothing but a ghost town thanks to a tragic history that made everyone who lived there want to move. And why you and your sister are going to participate in a very, very special game show. 